Just to see. 
Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Martin Street and all of God's people. We certainly want to welcome you here to Martin Street Baptist Church. So let us start by looking unto the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, again, we thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God, for just being able to wake up this morning and see the dawning of a new day. Oh, Father God, we recognize that this is a day that we've never seen before and a day that we shall never, ever see again. So we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we know that you're already in this place. This is your house. We are your people. We are the sheep of your pasture. And so, Father God, we pray now that you would go wherever your people are, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Invite them into this worship experience, Father God, so that we all might worship you in spirit as well as in truth. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let all of God's people say amen, amen, and amen. Again, we invite you to worship with us now. Wherever you are, you can stand to your feet, sing along with our praise team as they usher us into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Holy 
people. Amen, amen, amen. Hosanna. Amen. We give God the highest praise. Glory to God. Palm Sunday is not the only Sunday when we get to sing out. Hosanna, Hosanna. Amen. To God be the glory again. We want to welcome each and every one of you, wherever you're watching this morning, to Martin Street Baptist Church, to our online worship experience. And we just pray that something is said or done here in this worship experience today that not only blesses you today, but blesses you all the days of your life. Amen. And if you're being blessed by this ministry, we certainly pray that you will hit that share button. Amen. So somebody else might share in the blessings that the Lord is given unto you and tell them to make sure to join us on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Again, uh, we want to call your attention to a few of our announcements. For those of you at home, they should show up on your screen. Uh, we always start by asking that you would please pray for our sick and our shut-in. Again, we do have some among us that are dealing with sickness and disease, and they would like to get out and, and be about, but the body would not allow them. So those of us who believe in the power of prayer and believe that the prayers of the righteous do avail as much, we ask that when you go to God in prayer, that you would intercede on their behalf. Please pray for them so that when your time comes, somebody will pray for you. Amen. I send up a special prayer. Again, my brother-in-law, um, we found out earlier this week, had contracted the coronavirus. And so we certainly want to pray for him um, that he would be, uh, he would recover. He's been asymptomatic, but, um, you know, asymptomatic people are spreading the virus to other people. So we certainly want to pray for him. Amen. We certainly also want to remind all of our members of Martin Street Baptist Church that each Monday at 6 p.m. Uh, we have our drop-in membership call. It's just a time for us to get together, uh, see each other's smiling faces, let each other know that we're doing well, um, have special prayer requests, and just share a good word uh, from the Lord just to, uh, just to let them know that we're still thankful in the midst of everything that is going on. We're still thankful that we're alive and that we can still be able to worship him in spirit as well as in truth. So please uh, be on the lookout for the Monday announcements. Uh, the login information is there, and we, we're not there too long, maybe about 20, 30 minutes, just a little time just for everybody to say hello and see each other's smiling faces. Amen? We want to remind everybody that Bible study uh, has concluded for the summer. Uh, we take the summer off from our Bible study, but that does not mean we cannot continue with our personal Bible study. We'll continue to send out our weekly scripture readings, but we will also encourage persons to continue to spend time with the Lord uh, in study. Because again, the word of God through preaching, it'll get you excited, but it's the word of God through teaching that will really transform your life. Amen? Amen. Again, uh, those of us here in the state of North Carolina, uh, our state, unfortunately, is on this list of states who uh, the cases of coronavirus are continuing to go up. Um, and so sadly, um, uh, the governor had to institute a, a mask wearing policy. Uh, but for those of you that are watching at home, you see this graph. Again, this is from the Department of Health and Human Services. They update it every day at 12 noon. And as you can see, again, I want you to look at that yellow line. That yellow line, it should be flat or it should be going down. That indicates that the cases are going down and we are in a better situation. But if you look at it, um, again, if that was an airplane track, that would be a good thing. But since this is for cases of coronavirus, this is a bad thing. And so when this airplane begins to come down and land and get back to the ground like it was, then we'll know that it's safe for us to come back to church. But until then, again, as it says on the slide, please be smart. What does be smart means? Listen, take care of yourself. Don't wait for the White House. Don't wait for the governor's mansion. Don't wait for nobody else to tell you what is best for you in order to take care of yourself. Amen. As somebody said, it's better to be six feet apart than six feet under. Hallelujah, somebody. But also be safe. Amen. We want to do what's right. Uh, we want to wear our mask. Uh, we want to maintain that six feet of distance when it's possible. And we want to encourage others to be washing our hands as often as possible so that we can minimize the spread of the virus. Amen. 
Also, we want to remind all the members of our church, again, we are making preparations for our 151st first church anniversary and 43rd homecoming, which will be on the second Sunday in July, which is July the 12th. Uh, we will recognize uh, that event here at our 10 a.m. worship service. And again, in preparation for that, one of the things that we are asking members to do is if you would be so kind and gracious, if you would like, uh, send a photograph of your family. Doesn't matter what the scenery is, hopefully it's a good one, but a photograph of your family. And that we're going to, and again, as part of that, we hope that you will invite your family and friends to join us because homecoming is a time for family and friends to gather, amen, normally in worship, but it is also a time this year when we can gather virtually and hopefully you, your family will just put a smile on their face when they see their family portrait up on the virtual worship experience. So please be so kind and gracious to send in a family portrait. A means one. Well, we, we, we can't afford to have 10 for one family. So, so a family portrait. I know we got a lot, but see, can you pick out your favorite one, send it in to the church office. If you don't have the ability to send it in, if you bring it by the church office, uh, we will scan it and give it right back to you, and we'll do our best to recognize our families uh, as part of our homecoming celebration. Amen? Amen. Again, you see that coming up, uh, that slide is just saying what I said. Uh, just email or bring your church family photos. Again, we want to certainly uh, just thank everyone who has been so kind and so gracious to contribute to the work here at Martin Street Baptist Church. Again, we're only able to do what we're able to do because of your kind and gracious sacrificial giving unto the Lord. And again, I, I, I thank you so much because your giving to this church is not about me. It's certainly not about anybody else, but your relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there are multiple ways which you can continue to give or start to give unto Martin Street Baptist Church. One, you can mail in your contributions to Martin Street Baptist Church, 1001 East Martin Street, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27601. Or you can drop off your contributions on Monday through Thursday from 10, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at our church office or in the box outside at any time. Or thirdly, you can download the Cash App application uh, to any electronic device. There, once you download it, you can put in dollar sign MSBC donations, dollar sign MSBC donations. And again, 100% of those contributions will come directly to Martin Street Baptist Church. Lastly, uh, you can go to our church website, which is www.martinstreetbaptist.org, www.martinstreetbaptist.org. When you get to the website up in the upper left-hand corner, you will see the online giving tab. If you click on the online giving tab, you will come to the page that you see on your screen. There are multiple ways that you can give there. And as a reminder, you see one of those tabs, members, it does say in memoriam. Again, we, want, we know that each year for our homecoming and anniversary celebration, we do our in memoriam. Uh, this is a time when we get to uh, remember those that have gone on to glory before us, uh, those that paved the way for us to be here right now. We remember them doing anniversary and homecoming time. Again, um, our, our in memoriam contribution this year is $150. And again, make sure when you pay that, that you send in the list of names that you would like to have recognized on the in memoriam. Amen. It will be in some type of virtual format. So please do not assume that we have your list from previous years because this is we done by different persons. And so we only have what we have. So let's be mindful of that. Amen. Amen. It's now that time when we get to. Uh, look unto the Lord by the reading of his holy word. Our scripture reading for today will be found in the book of 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. The book of 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. And our pericope will start at verse number 44. 1 Samuel 17, verse 44. And I will be reading from the NIV version of the holy text. There you will find these words written. It says, come here, he said. And, I w and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, 
the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down to the, on, on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. God's word for God's people. It is blessed and made out of blessing to us all. You all may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Let us look unto the Lord in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Oh, Father God, it's a few of your humble servants gathered here this morning in the need of prayer. Father God, because we recognize that we need prayer, we also recognize that we need you. Because, Father God, we know that you are the only one with the power to answer our prayers. We know that you are the only one that has the power to give us the, the, the desires of our hearts. You are the only one, Father God, that can supply our every need according to your riches and glory. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, we, we thank you, Lord, for continuing to look beyond our many faults and simply seeing our needs. We thank you, God, because you have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. We thank you, God, because without you, there's no way that we would have made it thus far. And so, Father God, we come once again leaning on the everlasting arm. We come once again, Father God, pleading the blood of Jesus over our lives, asking, Lord, for forgiveness of sin, asking, Lord, that you will do what only you can do. Let us help us with our infirmities. Father God, we come also interceding on behalf of the sick and the shut-in this morning. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray now, Lord, that you would go wherever your people are, Father God. You will tend to the every need, Father God. Oh, Lord, we know that you are the potter and we are the clay. You are the one that has shaped us and molded us. So you are the only one that can heal what, what hurts us, Father God. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, we pray that you would touch, you would help, you would heal, and you would make them whole again. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, we just place your people into your hands that your all-wise and your perfect will may be done. Again, Father God, we pray a special prayer for any person that has been affected in, in, uh, by, by this coronavirus, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you would go where no medicine can go. Go do what no doctor can do, Father God, which is heal your people. But, Father God, we also ask that you would raise up a hedge of protection around us and that you would protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Father God, you would, we pray that you would make sure that anything before it gets to us, that it first has to go through you. And, Father God, in the name of Jesus, uh, we also pray for all of our elected officials across this land. We pray, Father God, that you will remind them that we are your children, Father God, and that anything that they're doing unto us, Lord, they're doing it unto you. We just pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would just help us, Lord. We need you now like we have never needed you before. Because, Lord, we're facing things that we fought. We, are, we were past. We are beyond. But, Lord, we realize that we're, we, we, we've come a mighty long way, but we still have a long way to go. And so, Lord, we need you right now in the name of Jesus to help us in ways that only you can. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus now, we want to place this time of worship into your hands. And we pray that everything that is said and done is pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let all of God's people say amen, amen, and amen. Yes.
Yes, yes. Greatly 
to be praised. We lift your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. No one is greater. Amen. No one is greater than God. Amen. We certainly want to thank our praise team once again for ushering us into the presence of the Lord and setting the atmosphere so that we might worship him in spirit as well as in truth. Amen. Amen. Music gets our hearts ready that we might receive God's word. And as we come now for these moments that we have to share uh, from God's word, I want to put a tag on this text that we all know so well, that, so well that says, it's not always what it seems. It's not always what it seems. Growing up, I didn't really have any video games or anything of that nature, but I did have a few toys to play with. And one of my favorite toys to play with back in the day were the little Transformers. One of the reasons I like these Transformers so much is because in just one moment, they could look like a plane, a truck, or a car. And then all of a sudden, they would transform and they would become something else. Oh, just like that, they, they, they would transform from an airplane into a robot. They would transform from a robot into, a, into an airplane, just, just like that. And the thing that always got me about Transformers were that you, you could be looking at them and you could be sure of what you thought it was. Well, then all of a sudden, what you were looking at wasn't what it seemed. And I'm sure in a real sense that there's somebody listening to me this morning 
but it's had some stuff to happen to them and, and they had already made up in their mind. They, they had already declared and convinced themselves that it, it was going to go one way. But then all of a sudden God stepped in and it went a different way. And to their surprise, when they looked back, they had to say to themselves that it didn't look, it, 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 that it was not what it looked like. And I'm sure that there's somebody here that can testify that when the bills that are on the table are greater than the money that you have in the bank. Or when, the, when, 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 the, when the distance you have to travel is further than the gas in your tank, that it'll make you seem like, oh, ain't no way I'm going to make it. it. It'll have you thinking that, 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 that what am I going to do now? When you go to the doctor and get that doctor's report and the doctor says, we don't really know what's going on. We got to run some tests. We don't know how to treat it. We, we don't know if you're going to make it. Once again, it can make you feel like it's one thing. But the good news is somebody also can testify that, listen, you got to hold on to God's unchanging hand because it ain't over until God says it's over. Oh, it may look like it's over and it feel like it's over, but you got to declare that God will have the final say-so on my situation. And Again, I don't know if any of you all Bibles talks about this story, but my Bible tells a story about Mary and Martha who had a sick brother named Lazarus. And the, word, and the Bible said that they sent word to Jesus letting them know that Lazarus was sick. My Bible also said that by the time Jesus showed up that Lazarus was dead. Lazarus was already in the dead man's clothing. They had already put Lazarus in the grave. The Bible said that by the time Jesus got there, that the professional mourners had already shown up. And if they, and if they were anything like us, that means that they had already fried the chicken. They would already cooked the collards, and they would already prepared the macaroni and cheese. Because to everybody there, it looked like it was over. It looked like it was time to have a funeral. It was time to say their final goodbye. But, but then Jesus showed up. And Jesus showed up with an attitude that said it ain't over until I say it's over. Because this sickness is not unto death. And so all I can tell somebody is the next time you're going through a situation and it seems like it's over, that's the time to open your Bible, find you a piece of scripture and stand on God's holy word and keep on standing on that word until Jesus shows up in your situation. Because I'm here to tell you that if you can just hold on to Jesus shows up, God has a way of turning your situation around. So as we come to our text this morning, most of us, one way or another, even if you don't go to church that often, you probably heard of the story of David and Goliath. I don't know if you heard about it in Sunday school or maybe you saw it on a cartoon or maybe you saw it on VeggieTales. I don't know where you heard it. But the good news is regardless of where you heard the story of David and Goliath, the ending is always the same. But I believe here in this context of this great story, this epic battle of David and Goliath, that David teaches all of us that, look, it's not always what it seems. The first thing that David teaches us, that if you want to find out what the real outcome is, it's all about your approach. It's all about how you approach things. You see, because David Church, for those of us that know, the, know, know this story well, you know that David, he did not come to this battle expecting to fight. But the Bible said that the only reason David showed up on the battlefield was to bring his brothers something to eat. And his job was to go back to his daddy's field. But to David's surprise, when he got there that day, he heard this Philistine issuing a challenge to all the men of Israel. And not even King Saul would come out and fight this Philistine. And so David decided, well, since nobody else is willing to fight, I'll accept your challenge. So when David stepped to Goliath, the Bible said that he came to him in verse 45, and he said, you come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. And 
again. All I'm trying to tell somebody is there comes a point in all of our lives and we will have to fight a battle. So the question is not whether or not you have to fight a battle, but the real question is how will you approach the battles that you have to fight in life? Because the, the biggest battles we have to fight in life will not be physical, but they always will be spiritual. And if you're going to fight a spiritual battle, then you've got to fight it on a spiritual level. Because Paul said what we wrestle against is not flesh and blood, but it's against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and against spiritual wickedness that sit in high places, which means that you can't fight that with your fist, but you got to fight that in the name of the Lord. See, if you're going to win a spiritual battle, then you can't approach it like a natural man. Because again, it might seem like a natural battle, but it ain't always what it seems. And I can tell you from experience that when the battle shows up, you're going to need more than your anointing oil. You're going to need more than just your prayer cloth. But you're going to have to approach this kind of battle with Jesus on your side. You see, because look, I don't know if any of you all know, but there's power in that name. Come on, somebody. That, 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 that name is above all names. That, that's the name that at that name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. And that's why the next time you're facing a battle, the next time you're up against a challenge, don't try to approach it in your own power, in your own strength, or your own intelligence. But you got to approach your battles in the name of Jesus. Sometimes you got to grab your child by the by the arms and you got to say look I'm 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 going to put Jesus in you. I didn't try beating the devil out of you but I'm going to try to put some Jesus up in you. Come on, sometimes you got to grab your marriage by the throat and you got to say, in the name of Jesus, this marriage is going to work. In the name of Jesus, this kid is going to college. In the name of Jesus, we will pay these bills. You got to take Jesus from the uttermost to the guttermost. Realizing there's power in that name. The next thing that David teaches us is it's all about your attitude. Not only do you have to approach it the right way, but when you get in the battle, you got to have the right attitude. You see, because when David steps to Goliath, he stepped to him with what I would call that Holy Ghost boldness. Because David said, this day. Come on, somebody. <laughs> it's, it's Dave, Dave, David was saying to him, look, look, I don't know, Goliath, about what you did any other day. I don't even know what you did, Goliath, yesterday. But what I do know is this day, the Lord will deliver thee into my hands. I will smite thee, and I will take your head from thee, and I will give your carcass of the host of the Philistines to the bear. And I'm not going to do it some other day, but I'm going to do it this day in the name of Jesus. David said, this day, the whole world shall know that there is a God in Israel. And again, I hope y'all caught what David was saying here because his words tell us about his attitude. Because again, David's attitude was, yes, I might be young. Yes, I might be small, but don't let my size fool you now. Come on now. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you got to say, I might not look like I can fight, but you better watch out. It ain't what it always seems. Again, David was saying, I might not look like I'm a match for you. I might not look like, I, I might look like I'm an easy win, but I ain't no easy win. Come on, somebody. Yeah, I ain't always been big. You know, I used to be a little one, Devin. I, listen, I used to tell him, you might beat me today, but if you beat me today, you're going to have to beat me tomorrow. And if you beat me tomorrow, you got to beat me the next day. And we're going to keep on fighting until I win. I ain't no easy win now. You know, some folks are one hit or quitter. You beat them one time and they scared the rest of their life. Oh, no, 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 no. Sometimes little folks got the biggest heart. And again, sometimes you got to let them know it ain't always what it seems. Just because you're looking at me doesn't tell you how much faith I have. Just by looking at me, you don't know how big my heart is, but you do know that big things can come in small packages. Because look, David was saying, I might not be a giant man, but I'm a giant in the faith. And I've come to let you know that I have all the faith and I have all the confidence to knock you out. Again, I hope somebody is listening to me here. Because if you're scared to fight your battles, 
then that's a you problem. Because God declared that he did not give us a spirit of fear. God told me to remind somebody that he's given you power. And not just any kind of power, but God has given you the kind of power that can move mountains. The kind of power that can defeat your enemies. So all I want to tell you is if you want to win your battles, if you want to defeat your enemies, then you got to have the right attitude. And you got to have an attitude that says, I shall not be defeated. you got to have an attitude that speaks those things that are not as though they were. Because again, somebody knows. I've heard it and I've seen it so many times that if, when you get diagnosed with cancer, it ain't about the treatment. It's about your attitude. And if you don't determine that you're going to beat it, it was going to take you out. A whole lot of folks, they lose the battle before the battle ever gets started. As soon as the doctors say they ain't going to make it, they already start making preparations to get in the grave. But sometimes you got to thank the doctor for practicing medicine and you got to do like Hezekiah and you got to go to the Lord and get a second opinion. You got to let them know sometimes, look, the reason I'm going to make it is because God declared that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. And if he could go through what he had to go through, then I can go through what I've got to go through, and I can make it. You see, one thing for sure in this text, anybody who knows this story, you know that David was the ultimate underdog. You know, sometimes the big bad bully, he be talking all the talking loud, acting like can't nobody even stand up to him. The Bible was clear to let us know that Goliath was a big man. Bible says that, that, that he had a coat of mail that weighed 125 pounds. The Bible said that he carried a spear that weighed 15 pounds. And here was little old David, just a shepherd boy. And all he had was a staff and a slingshot, which ought to be a word to some folks that, that a word that I don't have enough to go against my enemies. Sometimes you got to know that if God be for you, then who can be against you? But I can tell you one thing about David. He may not have had the size, but he did have the courage. He may not have had the armor, but he did have the faith. Jesus said if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, that nothing shall be impossible to you. Again, I hope somebody's listening to me right now because, look, I learned a long time ago that size is not the most important factor in a fight. Some of y'all know that from growing up. Size is a factor, but it ain't the most important factor. Because I've seen a whole lot of small people beat down some big people. Why? Not because of the size, but because they had a heart. And they would let you know, look, I might be small, but I'm the wrong one to mess with. You better leave me alone. Because many of us have heard the old saying, it ain't the size of the dog in the fight, but it's the size of the fight that's in the dog. Why? Because the right attitude in the middle of a battle, it makes all the difference. You know the old saying, if you don't think you can, you right. You can't. But as we move to the final point in this text, David teaches us that, lastly, it's all about your acknowledgement. When you're in the midst of a battle, you better acknowledge whose battle this really is. Again, David highlights for us in this text, in this text exactly what kind of God it is that we serve. See, when we talk about God so often, we want to describe him as this, 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 this loving God, this, this, this giving God, this, this gracious God, this merciful God. And he is all that. But he's also a jealous God. He's the type of God that wants to be number one. The God we serve doesn't want to share any of the credit. That's why David made it clear to everybody that was standing in the battle, on the battlefield. David wanted them to know, listen, all I got is a staff and a slingshot. 
Bible tells us that old Saul, he was so scared, but he offered David to take his armor and his spear. David said, no, thank you. I'm going to use what the Lord gave me. David declared, listen, the reason I only got a staff and a slingshot is because it's not by the sword and it's not by the spear that the Lord saves us. So in other words, David was saying, ain't no need to have physical weapons for a spiritual battle. Because this is a spiritual battle and not a physical battle, David wanted them to know that this battle does not even belong to me. But this battle that I'm fighting belongs to the Lord. Once David had sense enough, church, to acknowledge and declare who this battle belonged to, David said, look, I don't have to worry about the outcome. David looked at Saul and said, you might be big, but I don't even have to worry about you. Why? Because the God that I serve, he never lost a battle, a patient, a case, or anything else. God we serve can do anything but fail. Again, something tells me that there's somebody listening to me right now who woke up this morning fighting a battle. The battle you're fighting right now, this ain't no new battle, but this is a battle that you've been fighting for a long time. You were fighting this battle before we ever knew anything about a coronavirus. You were fighting this battle long before Donald Trump ever got into the White House. You were fighting this battle long before you ever got married. Why? You've been fighting the same old battle all your life. Your battle has been anything like my battle. You won some, you lost some. You've had some ups, you've had some downs. You've had some good days, you've had some bad days. You've taken a step forward, but you've had to take two steps backwards. And again, in the midst of your battle, sometimes you make you feel like Charlie Brown because you'll be asking yourself, why is everybody always picking on me? God told me to tell you that in the midst of your storm, in the, in the midst of your battle, it may seem like it's over. It may seem like it's a losing battle. It may seem like there's no way out. But things aren't always what they seem. Because sometimes what looks like a setback ain't nothing but a setup. Those of us who know the Bible know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible tells us that old King Nebuchadnezzar had a rule that when he played the music that everybody was supposed to bow down and worship him. But the Bible said that the king, he threatened to throw them in the fiery furnace if they did not bow down. And they said to old King Nebuchadnezzar, regardless of what you say and regardless of what you do, we refuse to bow down because the God we serve will save us. But even if he does not save us, he is still worthy of all our praise. The Bible goes on to say that old King Nebuchadnezzar, he turned the furnace up seven times higher than normal and he threw them into the fiery furnace. But after throwing them into the fiery furnace, the king looked in and he talked to his men and he said, did not we throw three men into the fire? And the men said, oh yes, king, we threw three in. And the king wanted to know, well, if we only threw three in, why when I look in there, do I see four men? And why does the fourth man look like the son of God? I'll tell you why. Because in the midst of your battle not only will God deliver you but God will get in it with you and God will fight on your side sometimes your enemy may think that they got you they may think they you were right in the position they want you to be in they may even think that it's over but you got to know that when God shows up that God will declare that this battle does not belong to you but this battle belongs to me and it ain't over until I say it's over Again, I don't know who it is I'm talking to right now. But again, sometimes you got to know that what your enemy is meaning for evil, that God will use it for your good. And as I get ready to take my seat, I want to tell somebody listening to me today, in the words of Diedrich Haddon, I want to tell you, don't give up on God because he will not give up on you because he's able. 
And if you want to know he's able, then all you got to do is acknowledge God in the midst of your battle. Acknowledge God every day that you wake up. Acknowledge God no matter what's going on in your life. Whether it's a sunny day or a rainy day or a stormy day. Acknowledge that God is still on the throne. Acknowledge that God has still got the power. Acknowledge that God can do anything but fail. And if you want to know that God can do anything but fail, then all you got to do is look to Calvary's cross. Because there he hung bled and died when it looked like it was over. There he went down into a borrowed tomb and it looked like it was over. He stayed there Friday and all day Saturday and it looked like it was over. But thanks be to God, it wasn't what it seemed to be because early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands. Oh, they thought they had him. <laughs> Oh, Friday night when he hung on that cross, man, I could, you know, his enemy was like, yeah, you saved others. Why don't you save yourself? Yeah, we got him now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got all power in your hand. We got him. They put him in the tomb of Joseph Arimathea. Saturday, I bet they threw a party, a Pharisaic party. <laughs> they thought they had him. Oh, Sunday morning when the angel came and rolled away the stone. Oh, Jesus got up saying, it ain't always what it seems. Yeah. It ain't over. It ain't over. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, we thank you. Thank you, God. We thank you for showing up in the midst of our battles. Oh, Lord, we thank you for showing up in the midst of our storms. And sometimes, Father God, like your disciples, we don't recognize that is you. We don't recognize that you're fighting on our side. But Lord, we thank you that you don't leave us in our times of distress. But instead, you continue to come closer and closer until you reveal to us who you really are. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, we pray now that you would continue to fight battles that we cannot Continue to make our enemies our footstool. Continue, Father God, to lift us up on high. And Father God, as you continue to lift us up, we'll continue to lift you up. Because you declared in your word, if I, if I, if I be lifted up, that I will draw all men unto me. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, we lift you up today. And as we lift you up, Father God, we pray for anybody under the sound of my voice, wherever they might be, that needs to be saved. As we lift you up, Father God, we want to say to any unsaved person, just look and ye shall live. Look unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, and ye shall live. As we lift you up today, Father God, we want to speak to the backslider. We want to speak to that person who has been saved, Father God, but is not living a saved kind of life. There's not living the kind of life that is pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just continue to lift you up today. And as we lift you up, Father God, we speak to that person in need of a church home. Father God, we want to let them know that the building is just a, a loc in a location. But you, Father God, is our destination. You, Father God, you are our home. You are our resting place. And Father God, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that needs a church home, we want to invite them to come to you, Father God, so that they might be connected to a local body of believers and they too might be under the covering of the blood. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus now, as we come to the conclusion of this worship experience, we pray, Father God, that everything that was said and done was not for any manner of show, but it was a sweet-smelling savor that came up to you, Father God, and it was all pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. We pray, Father God, that your name was glorified. And so, Lord, as we get ready to leave this place, but never from your presence, again, we pray, Lord, that you would go with us and that you would lead God and direct us along the way. And Lord, we will be ever so careful to give you honor, to give you praise, and to give you glory. 
Because, Lord, you deserve that. No, so much more. In Jesus' name we do pray. And now unto him who is able to keep us all from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding ecstatic overwhelming joy to the only wise God our Savior be dominion and power both glory and majesty this day henceforth and forevermore. And let all of God's people say amen. Amen. Again, we thank you for joining with us in this worship experience today. We pray that you were blessed by the experience, and we pray that you would press share so that you can share this blessing with someone else. And again, we invite you to join us on next Sunday morning as we celebrate our first Sunday, our Holy Communion Sunday here at Martin Street Baptist Church. And again, as we get ready to leave, I want to remind you of this as I remind you all our broadcasts, whenever and wherever you are in Raleigh, remember, all roads lead to Martin Street. Amen. God bless.